Welcome to the map is Mnet in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a replay cast of a really great game. Between the green Gondor player Donadine, his ally the red Isengard player Neo, their opponents the Rohan player Good Solonius and his ally at the top right the blue Gondor player Krixos. Blacksmith and farm opening for both the Gondor players with a Uruk pit furnace opening for Aizen and double farm opening for Rohan. He's gonna get at least one more peasant. But that's a very um, unique map. Not that good for evil though. So good factions have definitely the upper hand in this map. Because you have only one farm outside. That's not gonna be good. But we have it in the arena just for some map diversity. There are also other maps which are super nice for the evil factions. But this one just isn't. Is he gonna use Warchant here? Because they both commit... On the Lumber Mill, there comes the Delete Warchant. But the Lumber Mill is going to be still taken down for sure. You can't protect it. And the Gondor player was also a little bit too late for defending. In the meantime, the blue Gondor player Krixus attacking the farm from Dunedain. We have a fight between two full of a Tux. Pippin versus Pippin, the micro round. Um, this guy is trying to hit this hobbit, but the hobbit is trying to hit the soldiers. They will get the chance to commit on the farm, but there comes the war chanted soldier. And they dealt a lot of damage. Heal is not being used. But the farm is going to be still taken down. That's a phenomenal start for the Gondor Rohan team. As expected though, it's expected that they deal a bit more damage at the beginning of the game. The hobbit from Dunedain was also able to win the fight. The host player of this game though is the Gondor player Krixus, who is now building up the stable after two farms inside the base and a blacksmith. And he has also two farms outside, it means he has now, as we are talking, 15% uh, food bonus for cheaper cavalry. He needs to only pay 680, so definitely a bit less than this Gondor player, who's gonna go for farming actually, not for horses. It's also probably not a bad choice, because there are troll creeps on this map, on each side and also one in the middle. And if you get your Faramir to a level 5, for example, you can provide leadership for your allies' combos. This Isengard's eco not looking good, so he needs a lot of time to get ready. As we get to see more and more peasants coming to this location. So the Rohan player is planning to go for Irma, as I can see from his bees. He's not building anything, he has 1200, so he needs a little bit more. Um, and Tuandan is kind of, you know, pinging this war player and saying, take this creep. You will need it, you will need the money. Use your Uruks to creep this, to get the money, to fill up your base a bit faster. Because of the fighting action though, Isengard has almost a power point in the bank. The spike we are looking for is of course gonna be level uh, 2 power points for the industry. That's gonna be super helpful and needed for Aizen. And Faramir should be the one who's gonna get the last hit here. As the soldiers are leaving it to the Hobbit and Faramir, who just got level 4. One more level needed. I think his next move is gonna be Boromir. Boromir can be sent to this creep. So you have like armor leadership from the one brother and the damage leadership from the another brother, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, beautiful leap attack, a beautiful arrow volley. I'm not arrow volley, I'm talking wounding arrow, that's what I was trying to say. Yoma is still gonna be able to trample down the soldiers over and over again. Getting super close to level 4. So the good side team that's going to be including the Gondor and Rohan, they will go for the cavalry heavy build. And Gondor player Dunedain knowing this, and he knows that he will definitely lose in long terms against the horses, um, going for combos instead. Maybe he might go for Borofara into the Gandalf too. Let's see what he's going to choose. But the first rush from Krixus already happening, punishing the Isengard player who did not build any. And when I say any, I mean any towers in the back. Only one in the front, that's not going to be enough to keep two battalions of the knights away. Uh, but without bleeds, their damage against furnaces is not going to be the greatest. But he still will be able to destroy at least two of the furnaces. And when you are behind already with the money as Aizen, that's going to not... You're not, you're not gonna like this. You're not, not, you're not gonna like this. Farah almost level 5, but the knights can deny this creep by luring the troll away. And this knights now with Forge Blades, it's gonna be a whole different story. He will get the chance to get the creep and also. I think all the money too. Aizen sent all the Uruks into the allies base. He doesn't wanna feed them. So one of them is level 2 too. That's pretty good. And Irma 
can lead the troll now to the beast and get to kill him. We have no more creeps. Krixus is pinging this, but it's already gone. Um, the only creep remaining is going to be this creep, which could be taken by, you know, the heroes of Rohan. That's going to include Eoma and Theorin to get his horse lord to level 4. This Faramir is almost level 5. He's going to get there. Uh, Boromir has not been recruited. We it looks like that Dunedain is planning to rush Gandalf. But he has definitely not the money for that. He's going to go for the outpost control. Which can be quite easily protected with the pikeman of Aizen. The teamwork is super important. But soon this pikeman can't walk outside safely. Because they will have to encounter some of the Rohir marchers. Leadership is 40% armor and the resistance to fear. And the stable is building up after recruiting all three Rohan heroes. Eoma, Theorin and also Eowyn. But Theoden is almost dying to the... <laughs> actually, oh my god. Oh, he had to use heal actually. The troll is a mean one. Punching you in the face. Oh my god. And the Faramir from Dunedain stole the troll actually. That's like the worst case scenario ever. The commitment on the outpost with the Knights of Gondor. Uh, one pikeman was getting beaten. And also Dunedain didn't demolish the structures in time. Feeding lots of power points to the Gondor player. A level 5 knight super deadly but he needs to still bail because the war chain has been used on the pikeman two power points now in the bank for dunedain so he's planning to definitely rush his can off very very soon and aizen should be kind of getting back into the game though like when you have like three settlements outside it should be not super difficult for you to get back into the game now it's dancing around the rosy who's gonna get the last hit Oh, Farami is gonna get chunked a little bit. Be careful. Eowyn, Eoma's spear can be deadly. He's not gonna... Oh, there comes the heal. And a smart move from the Gondorohan team, you know. They don't want to go for the for the risk, risky play. Oh, but he still took it. What a giga chat. <laughs> what a giga chat. A whole battalion of knights. Eoma and Theorin, but Faramir in this game, ladies and gentlemen, has definitely shown his quality 5704 gondor player duradine there is gonna be a gandalf very very soon and that's going to be great as the knights are demolishing the pikemen over there and there comes the big heal nice micro from gondor and that's a proof that you can still fight the pikemen with your knights if you have fort fleets and heavy armor on them and especially when you are level three four five it's gonna be much much easier to encounter this you can actually buy Forge Blades and Heavy Armor or Heavy Armor. That's going to make your Pikeman super, super tanky. In the base game, the Heavy Armor didn't affect your resistance against horses. But in 2.2, it definitely does. Nice catch over there. Um, but basically, more and more Pikeman are coming. So Gondor is placing a land close to the Isengard piece. And that's a super risky move. Oh my god, Theoden is running it down. Theoden, Theoden, Theoden. Fara me, fara me, fara me, fara me, fara me. Oh my god. He's not going to be able to do that. And again, both the Rohan heroes have been killed. Fara me, the survivor. Was able to get away level 6. And there comes Mifrandia. The Great Pilgrim is going to turn into the White Rider now with the gun of the pi White Power Point. Um, also, Krixos is going to get his Gandalf very, very soon. He was fighting a little bit more. He got a bit more power points collected. So, he has the power points to turn his Grey into the White. But also, hit the power points to go for the Elven Wood and place it. Which, by the way, Isengard countered. So, that's going to be a double-edged sword. Later on, the rain can be negated by stepping on the land from Aizen. And you want to still have rain. Let me take a look into the levels of these heroes. Eoma, level 3. Still not level 4. And Theoden is only level 1. So Rohan is a little bit out of the game, but Krixos has the potential to carry the situation. Warchan has been used after taking way too much damage, but this level 5 knights are no joke. But again, war oof. There comes the cripple. Lord got the damage a little bit, and cripple has a semi-long cooldown. So we need to respect that one. There's, there are going to be two Gandalfs on the field now. Isengard taking over the map. Um, Gondor could go for the outpost control right there and go for the siege. That's what you want to do. You want to bring the fight to them. Otherwise, your Eisen will, ally will get rushed over and over again. But Isengard can go for this outpost and build the siege works and start uh, sending some rams, you know. Isengard is a way easier time and faster time to siege 
an early Rohan. Because trebuchets are more expensive than uh, leathers, or especially the rams are super cheap, you know? Okay, Faramir has been healing up to full HP. Has also the Captain of Gondor to level up the units. Lords has to be careful, but there is going to be a well. It's the wizard from Tonadine who's going to go for the marketplace next. So he's going to go for the, for the ultra late game build. Because he has zero farms outside. Yes, he has nothing to fight for the out outside settlements besides Farami and Kenav. But maybe he can afford to do that because the map is not ultra big. However, this Rohan will have like this farm potentially for the entire game. So he will find his way back into the game as also Eoma has been revived from the graveyard. Needs half a level to unlock the most important leadership for the horseman, the horse lord. And Farami has to be careful. If he gets caught off guard, double spear from Eowyn and Eoma. Couple of hits from the Rohirrim archers and he might fall. Um, also, Krixos got his scan up, up on the field. Blasting some pikemen over there. And Aizen will get ready. So, um, went for a very early siege. He has not that such a big army. Didn't go for Saruman. When you don't go for Saruman, your push without the, the required damage leadership is going to be kind of tricky. His lord's only level 1. Oh. We have a wizard battle over there. Faramir gives armor leadership, that's also not bad. So armor from Faramir plus Warchant will increase the durability of this Isengard combos quite a bit. And remember, this is a level 6 Faramir, his warning arrow is gonna hurt you. So he can always go for the combination of warning arrow plus the easter light from the Gandalf to burst down this Gandalf. Who can, by the way, block most of the incoming damage with the magical shield if he times it perfectly and nicely. So a spear throw. But again, Eoma leadership luck is huge. He's going for the horses. I would love to see a Boromir there. Just put him next to the combos and he can easily level up. It is a Faramir still. Went for the outpost. So both the outposts under the control of the Gondor player, Dunadain. We have three combos, one pikeman and Lourdes level one. Aizen is far away from getting Saruman. He's not super rich. But they want to bring the fight now to them. But there comes the Gandalf. Where is the, where is the cripple? Uh, he missed the cripple. Boom, boom, spear throw. There comes the... Oh my god, Krixus got had to use heal on his, on his Gandalf. Oof, this guy is looking for a chance too. But there comes the Easter Delight. Boom, and he's gonna fall. That's such a huge kill. Did Theoden get experience from this kill? No, he didn't. That would be like the worst case scenario, but his Eoma got finally, not even level 4 yet, but ultra close for that. Eowyn, the... Ooh, Gandalf is diving in, but that's a little bit risky. There comes the second heal, and boom! Chakadaka. The, the Warchant once again coming a little bit too late. Gandalf is gonna be evil to survive. And what a big, successful fight for the Gondor Rohan team, ladies and gentlemen. And now you have room, now you have momentum to kind of push your opponent back. This Faramir has to be careful. There are two, and he doesn't demolish the structures in time. Now Theoden got a hella experience, same as Eowyn, who is also level 3. Faramir, I don't know, Dunadar is not paying attention. And Faramir is going to fall. But unfortunately, again, the Rohan heroes didn't get any experience from this fight either. So... Stable is going to be rebuilt. I think he went for all the upgrades first. He's now heavy armor, banner, uh, and fire arrows. Now it's all about bringing more and more Rohirrim archers. And later on, also Aragorn. Gandalf is looking for a chance. Full commitment. There comes the blast. And whole battalion will be sent back to the pit the Uruks came from. There comes the lightning sword. Krixos is cooking. He's on fire. Who's gonna stop this Gandalf when the other Gandalf is dead? And the army of Aizen is getting absolutely slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. So Gandalf has to be revived. Farami has to be revived super, super, super fast. And again, in my opinion, Borrow leadership, like a bit earlier Borrow, sending him to this location, getting him to level 4, putting him next to the Isengard combos would 
mit der Army of Isengard. Much more threatening. The Lords came a little bit too late. Um, super hard to level up Lords when he comes super late. So he's still level 1. Needs like 3 full levels to unlock his damage leadership. And you just lack the damage. And why is the damage important? What is the damage important for? It's basically when you cripple a hero, you need to know that you have to go through two heals, okay? You are against Gondor and Rohan, they have two heals. Each player has access to the heal of his spellbook. So if you cripple Gandalf, he can use the bubble and then he has two heals. So he has the durability and most importantly the sustain to stay alive. So when you have the damage leadership from Lords, though, you, you can't. You break through the shield, you break through the heal, you break through the sustain, you burst them. So even with three heals, he could not stay alive. That's how important the damage leadership is. That's why Boromir and Lourdes would be essential. Now, you only have the Warchant, which is, I mean, only sounds maybe not right, because it's still super important. But it's just not enough. But the game is gonna go for a while. The Ganav here from... The Crixus is level 7, by the way. Each level will make him tankier. So this one has 2,070 HP. This one has only 1,870. 200 more HP. There comes the big Easter Light on this Gandalf. Who's getting chunked a little bit. So whenever you get Easter by a Gandalf, Spiatro has to use heal. There comes the land from Crixus. And that's the land. And now Isengard will cover the land. Oh, bad trample. The land from Rohan is coming a little bit late, but now Dunedin is going to be the co coverer of this land. They hard focus Gandalf, who's going to just stand there and use the lightning sword. Now catching a lot of stuff, but there comes the crippled boom. Beautiful, but they don't die. Now they have too much armor leadership. There was an int play. He's going to use heal. No, he is not. The Gandalf is going to kill the other Gandalf. And Lords got actually a lot of experience but in this situation it's super important to put your lords in your army you can this way get even more experience we have trebuchet coming from Krixos, demolishing the army but the knights of gondor from dunedain are gonna be able to kill nope they won't be able to kill there is still a protection put yeah you see when you put him close he's gonna share so much experience beautiful shot incoming from this trebuchet a level eight Rohirrim Archer, level 3 Theodine, level 4, finally, Ioma. That's hella damage on this highly leveled Rohirrim Archer army. So Gandalf is going back to the base. He didn't even have a well, so he needs to wait until the well is fully built to heal up back to full. Um, he's going for some trebuchet, trying to, I think, sneak him, sneak them in a little bit. You can see the set waypoint. So he's sending them directly to the base of his ally. And you need, in total, four trebuchet to get your workshop to level two for the for the Firestone. So here, they have weakness against fire arrows, so you need to be careful. Again, Warchant, this time even too early, because the fight... Oof, what a shot, bro. What a shot. That's another example. If you have level five Lords, ooh, but this Lord's gonna be in trouble. Uh, Oh, the, the Rohirrim arts are so strong here with the statue, you can't even believe it. Look, the damage, to They give him a, li a little bit laugh tap and half health is gone. Double spear. Eowyn actually chunks the uh, Gandalf a lot. Good micro there. Good uh, reaction. Always hero focus with your Rohirrim arts. They have like a damage skull against heroes. They actually deal crazy damage with that much leadership. Remember, the statue also gives you 75, right? And that all of that without Aragorn. So Aragorn can give you another damage leadership. So Rohan is all about raw damage, you know, they don't care about defense. The only one who gives defense is actually Theorin. All other heroes, Eomo, Aragorn, just give you raw damage power. And uh, we have Trebuchet upon uh, on their way. Ooh, beautiful catch, beautiful catch. Nice one, super important to catch those Trebuchet. Also smart from Rohan to put his Theodin is super close to his Eoma. The Great Company has been used. Oof, what a fine shot. Now it's a dangerous situation because if these trebuchet land on this Rohirrim Archer army, again, they are glass cannons. They deal damage, yes, but they can't take damage. If they land some shots on the Rohirrim Archer army, it's going to be all over. So the outpost is going to be retaken. So it's a back and forth game. Exactly my taste of gameplay. I like this game the most. And Gandalf is back on the field, boys. Almost level 8. This Gandalf is almost level 7. And now, they're gonna be finally knocking at the wall from... Oh, smart move with the 
outpost or dig now. Oof, what a juice. Uh. Oof, oof. Full commitment. Paramir is going to be the focus. Hero focus, super important. Warchan coming now. Ooh, he wanted to sneak in. But he lost the whole battalion of the knights. And the traps, the two of them. Oof, what a fine catch, actually. Nice, too. Amazing, actually. Now it's turning again. You know, I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm, I'm wondering where the where the Lourdes is. Oof. What is the Saruman doing over there? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Put me to the Citadel. No, the Eagles are coming. There comes finally the Cripple. Eagles are still going though. You want to kill the Eagles first? I don't know if there is heal. Lourdes level 4. Heal is going to be used. Full focus. Double heal. The lack of damage leadership, you can't believe it, but he's gonna fall. All the heroes are dead though. Ganef has been killed from the Gondorizen team. Saruman has been killed. There comes the glorious charge. And Rohan is gonna shine bright like a diamond. Uh, oof, boy, boy, boy. And look, these are the tiny things you are missing. But these tiny things, they have such a incredible huge impact on this game as you have seen in this situation i don't want to even take a look into the power points look at this Crixus has almost eod needs only four and a half uh, four and a half power points for that neo the isengard has almost barok needs two and a half power points for that and rohan i don't want to even took it look gondor dunadain is actually at two power points he has got zero kills he has no army to fight with he has basically super delete knights of gondor he can't fight and commit even closely to the rohir marcha army he can only try to fight with his Gandalf and uh, in faramir and then we have a good solonius the rohan player he's up to four power points after the end summon and the end summon gives you potential to commit to the base of gondor so i think dunadan has good amount of money he should have nope he doesn't have because i believe he's getting more and more traps upon the field and now that's gonna be the thing what i was expecting they might go for the for the ends and break in through 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 but there is a trap so the ends need to kind of throw rocks because if the trap with firestone will land they will get take a lot of damage Tuna is saying go to his base but rohan prob probably has the money no he doesn't have the money to repair he's going for the for the tower kill but there are three traps he needs to get through um Okay, so this trap is gonna for sure land one shot. Oof, only, only one end has been taken. It's gonna be difficult to commit on this piece. If Condor is paying attention, he can put them in between those structures. Will make it even harder. Oh, smart move from Rohan actually went for the for the Zita, knowing that Gandalf is gonna be there very soon. And this way he will deny so much time. Because he went for the Gandalf at the main castle, not at the outpost super nice and now the traps are landing shooting like crazy bro there comes the rohirrim summon from dunadine the green gondor player he's gonna go for the for the bees uh, but in reality he should just kill yeah and eoma was killed before he just came back from the graveyard where is the war chant at he has the he has the balrog he has the balrog he has the balrog he has the ball oh he should have waited imagine if you kill this army bro Rohan can buy this outpost though, so he won't be defeated even if his. Why did he use Breath Fire at the gate though? I don't know. Now you wanna commit. He doesn't use Ignite, that's why he can't kill the Zitter fast enough. And now they are fighting for the outpost. Gondor is trying to fight as long as he can to deny his opponent from capturing the settlement over there. Can Balrog finish in time? Can Balrog finish in time? no he missed the breath fire he missed the breath fire without ignite you can't one shot the structures there comes the gc and yeah rohan is going to be able to clean up this area the knights are still fighting but they don't stand a chance oh there comes the eod and the Zitter revealed just go for the fireball bro donathan is pinging him and he's damn right now it's too late now it's too late and you could have finished it oh my god what a crazy game man Crixus eod 
to save the day and his ally knowing i mean he could have not purchased the smart move from dune to capture this one fight for this one he wanted turn to turn the 2v2 situation into a 2v1 situation smart move from rohan to go for the citadel knowing that gandalf will come out and he's gonna leave the game because he knows there is no chance anymore um dune has actually only he had like four power points and three of them were invested <laughs> <laughs> into the uh, Rohirrim summon. Anyways, guys, it was a great game. Hopefully, you also enjoyed watching this. If you did, you know, leave a like, comment down below, and also subscribe to not miss future uploads on this channel. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.